How are you guys doing? I love you. So um, why are speakers, before they come out here, feeling so nerve-wracked? It's very nerve-wracking because I'm thinking, what can I deliver in 20 minutes that's going to be able to impact you? As so I said a little prayer about five minutes ago backstage, um, asking for clarity so that I can bring value to you, and also that you would uh, sit here with an openness of mind and heart so that you can receive what I can possibly share so that it increases your business and betters your life. So you guys ready? So let's begin. What is your end game? I always like to begin everything I do with the end in mind. So did you get into network marketing so that you can have a new job? Anybody? You hated your job so much that you wanted a new job? Probably not. How about you did it because you want freedom? How many here got in because you heard there was freedom to be found by your network marketing business? So here's what everybody needs to remember. This business is about figuring out how the successful people before you did it and then copying what they did. Did anybody uh, read Building an Empire, my, my second book? Anybody read it? How many of you uh, believe it helped you in your business already? Okay. So my first 16 years in my business, everything was about me and my team. How can I go out there and build my business? Over the last six years, five to six years, I actually came outside of that cocoon and I, decided, I wanted to find a way to be able to help every single network marketer who wants to become masters in this business. And that's what I have been very, very driven by every day. You know, people I've never met, maybe never will meet. Maybe I, I, I see on Facebook, they're on a, in a country on the other side of the world talking about something that they read in my book or they heard me talk about and now they're on the stage being recognized as their top recruiter in their company, a top earner in their company. And so that's what you're here for, you guys. You're here to learn how to master your network marketing business. Now, I want to ask everybody real quickly to raise your hand as if you're taking an oath. Raise your hand like you're taking an oath. Now, what I want you to do next is raise your hand like you are trying to be called on for something as high as you can. That's the difference between being in your network marketing business and pursuing mastery of your network marketing business. Now raise your hand as high as you can. If I told you, is that as high as you can go? As high as you can go. But you don't have to stand up, as high as you can go, sitting down. As high as you can go, sit, sitting down. That's as high as you can go. If I told you that Marina's car is yours, if you can go one millimeter higher, go a little higher. So you guys can go higher. You thought you were already as high as you'd go, but if you got a free car, you would have gone higher. When there's a will, there's a way. So let's talk about what it is that we are actually doing in network marketing, because I believe there's a difference. There's a difference between, look, a seller has a job. You're not, this is not GoPro selling mastery. It doesn't take much to learn how to sell your product. A seller has a job. I didn't get involved in this business. I didn't get to go from real estate to network marketing to be a salesperson. A recruiter has a job with leverage. You're a salesperson and now you've got other salespeople. But network marketing is creating a machine that will give you the passive and ever-increasing income and time freedom. And there's a difference between a seller, a recruiter, and somebody who's a network marketing professional. Let's talk about that. Network marketers need to learn some very key um, disciplines in this business. And here's what I always was taught. You get into the system, you follow the system. If you're a great follower, you'll make some great money. But eventually, you need to go from being a follower of the system to eventually become a part of the system. You used to go to presentations and take your prospects to presentations and go to the trainings and take notes and bring your team to the trainings, but eventually you will be the presenter, but eventually you will be a trainer as a part of the system because the person with the clicker always makes the most money. 
and that's where you want to get to. So first thing you want to do is the gateway activity, the one thing you got to always do is prospect. That is the number one thing. There's no presentations. There's nobody getting closed if you haven't approached somebody and got somebody interested in your opportunity. So prospecting is number one. And I also want to put a caveat in here. Each one of these bullet points I'm going to share with you, they're, they're, they're loaded. I mean, I can come up here for five hours and talk about this one slide to be able to get deep enough to really give you mastery. So I can't give you mastery in anything. My talk for 20 minutes, I can only give you a little bit. But you got to be a great prospector, and you also have to be a maniac in following up. I feel like I'm the follow-up king. I, I'll talk to, I will follow up and follow up and follow up, and five, six, seven, 10, 15 years later, finally some, sign somebody up. The only way somebody gets off my list is that they sign up or they die. That's it. Okay. Number two, presenting. First, you prospect people, get some people interested, then they got to see a presentation. Now, you got to be able to do a presentation. You might say, well, I've got a video. What if the video doesn't work? Or, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I've got, I've got a, a, a tool that you use, but you've got to be able to sit down over coffee and be able to show somebody the opportunity, if not for your prospect, if you want to be always using third party, is you going to be doing for your people's prospects, but you've got to be able to do a presentation. Again, the person with the pen, the person with the clicker, the person that can present always will make the most money. You're not going to let anybody else dictate your success because you got your hands on the controls. The third is closing. You've got to learn how to close. Now, Eric Worre does a phenomenal job. Just reread and reread the GoPro book. It's as simple as that. You don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel. You don't have to go out and say, okay, how am I going to teach my team how to close? Just read that book. Learn the closing. Then fourth, you got to be able to be a good sponsor. And a lot of people look at this business and like, I got to find prospects. I got to be able to learn, do the presentation. I need to be able to close people. And then that's their end game, closing people. I don't like the word close, even though I use it because you're really opening somebody at that point. You're, you're start, that's a starting point. When somebody signs a, a, an application to become a distributor on, on your team, they've done nothing more than sign a written permission slip for you to keep recruiting them. Because until they're making a full-time living in this business, they're this close from quitting the business at any time, right? Unless they're making full-time living, counting on this money, they can be gone anytime. So you need to be able to be a good sponsor. You've got to take time to work with the infants in your business until they learn and grow through that process. Uh, number five, you, you've got to teach the system. I'm super, super big. A lot of my book in Building an Empire is all about being system driven. You know, I live an incredible life. We've got an 11-year-old son. He's never had a, a parent working outside of the home. My wife, Melissa, who's a great support, and we work this business together. We've got a seven-month uh, 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 you know, baby at home. And we've got, because we're so system driven, we have all the time freedom that we want. I'm, I work from home every single day because of the system doing a lot of the heavy lifting. It's like, if, I want you guys to, in your notes, just draw a picture of like a river. Just two lines, like, like you've got a river in your notes. Your goal is to get people, in, that's the system, get people into the system, get them into the river and let the current sweep them down to the destination, sweep them to the top levels of the business for you. That's crucial because if you're trying to drag somebody down the bank, you can only drag Barely, you could probably drag one person down at a time, but you can throw a thousand people into this massive river and it's going to sweep them all along. So you've got to be system driven. You also want to make sure that you're good at promoting events. Events can do what we can't do. This weekend, this GoPro event is doing for my team what I can't do myself. I'm pretty darn good at the business, but my team doesn't listen to me. Your team doesn't listen to you. A prophet's never heard outside of the, you know, in their own backyard. You've got to go find people that your team can hear as a new voice from a faraway land that's going to be able to say the same things you're probably saying to them, but they're going to be able to hear it. And the stories, you got your story, but they need to hear a multitude of stories. So you want to promote events. And then lastly, you want to develop leaders. And that's the key. It's not about you building yourself into a job. It's not how quickly you can get into a network marketing business and, and, and be working your, your tail off for the rest of your life. It's how quick you can get in, set it up where it's autonomous, it's self-sufficient. So if you decide you want to retire, you can. Now, like Eric, like Eric said today, you know, you retire from things that you don't like. I love network marketing. I love what I do. People say, well, Brian, if you, if you really made all this tens of millions of dollars, why do you still work so hard? I haven't done it for the money in a long time. I do it because I love what I do. I love the brand new person that just joins the team and they've got, for the first time in their life, hope. And they feel like I can finally, I like to say network marketing gives kids their parents back. I don't take for granted that my kids have us there all the time. I want, I want millions of kids to have their parents 
having more time with them. So that's what network marketers need to learn how to master those seven things. You guys get that? Yes or yes? yes. So focus and consistency are two of the main things that I uh, harp on with my team on an ongoing basis. You've got to be laser focused on the business and you've got to be very, very consistent. You guys remember the popcorn, microwave popcorn thing last year? How many of you guys were there last year? How many of you guys remember that microwave scenario, right? Did it help you? Because I think you've got to give yourself visuals of, 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 to remind you that you need to be consistent in the business. Eric just talked about it a minute ago. If you're on, off, on, off, herky-jerky, you're never going to get momentum. It's a momentum-based business. So there's two things that I think are very important for us to have consistent focus on. Number one is IPA, income producing activity. Anything that you're doing where you're not talking to a prospect is what I would call B activity. Now, you, it might, there's some B activity that needs to be done. For example, you know, making sure that you do a conference call to teach your team something. That's B activity. It's important, but that's not money-making act activity where you're talking to a prospect, yours or your team's. And then secondly, communicating and leading. If we can go back, I'm sorry. Go back one slide. Maybe it's my clicker. There we go. Communicating and leading. We've got to always be in communication. Here's what I, here's what I know about this. If I recruit somebody in this business, if I'm not talking to them every single day, by the end of the month, 80% of those people are out of the business. 80% will join a witness protection program because I was not treating them like an infant from the very get-go. I need to be there with them nonstop until I get them paid and promoted, get that belief check in their hands. And we also need to make sure that we don't just do it in their first week or the first 30 days. We want to do that for the rest of their career until they become a self-sufficient leader, a top leader in your company. At that point, now you got somebody who's solid. Now, let's move on. Consistency, here's what I did. I wrote an ebook several months ago called The Two-A-Day Phenomenon. And I put it out there on my blog and I, I told all my team members, I said, look, I want you guys to go get this ebook. It's like 10 pages. Go get this ebook and I want you to read it. And that all the, the only purpose of that ebook was to get them convinced that they have to do two new exposures every single day to grow their business. Two a day. Guess what? I learned that literally 19 years ago from Eric Worre. Two a day will set you free. So here's what I did. I got people on the team. They, got, they read the ebook and they're like, they got totally convinced. They said, I, I get what this is going to do in my business. And so on my Facebook group, on, on, I, on, I put a picture of the ebook and I said at the bottom there, I will until two a day. Drop, did to, just drop those words, did to in the comment section. We have had thousands and thousands and thousands of people on our team that on a daily basis are going in there and just said, did to because I'm taking this simple discipline and I'm putting some accountability behind it. And now people are feeling compelled to do it. And they're also seeing the social media recognition, the validation, you know, the, 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 the reward of, of other people on the team seeing that they're actually performing and doing what they know they need to do to succeed. So let me share with you a little bit about what this might look like. How many of you guys, by a show of hands, let me put this up on the Elmo. How many of you all by show of hands are, uh, agree that if you did two exposures a day, that would be beneficial for your business? Okay. How many would be willing to commit today to just doing two exposures a day? Raise your hand if you're willing to do two a day. Now, if you're not raising your hand, this probably should be your last network marketing meeting. And I, I didn't ask Eric if it was okay for me to come up here and be very blunt and very forceful about it. But when I'm talking to my team, I'm very straightforward. People, people tend to like my style because there's a lot of people that just want to say what you want to hear so you feel all warm and fuzzy. Oh, he's such a nice guy. That's not me. If you're not going to do two exposures a day, you're not going to make it in this business. And I don't care anybody, any bullshit excuse you want to come up with. Oh, I'm busy and all that. Here's the bottom line. Anybody, part-time, full-time, spare time, people can do two exposures a day. Anybody. So if you just were willing to do two a day, so this is you and you're doing your two a day, that's you. And then you find five people on your team that each go out and just do their two a day. 
You, again, you're not setting records. But guess what happens? Soon enough, and it's not going to grow ex exactly the way that, that looks there, but soon enough, you have 25 more people that join your team doing two a day. And then what's going to happen? Again, it's going to keep on growing. But look, you got, you got, you got 10, you got 50, you got 250. You got 310 exposures a day happening in your organization. If you have 310 exposures a day, what if you just got 5% conversion rate? Obviously, it's not going to happen that same day, but with the, with the proper follow-up over the next several days after they checked out your presentation, what, what, what's that number right there? Let's just call it 15. 15 new recruits per day equals about 450 recruits a month. How many of you guys right now don't have but wish you had 450 new recruits a month coming to your organization? Here's why it's not happening for most of you. You're not doing your two a day. You do, it to, you do your two when you feel like it. When the, opportun when the opportunity arises, but your business is a business of convenience. You're going to bed too many days. At the end of the night, you haven't done your two a day, but you still go to bed anyway because you did something in your business. You talked to people in your downline. You did something. You th think, oh, I still built my business today. If you're not leading by right example, you're all leading by example, by the way. Some of you not by right example. I don't need to keep being recruited. I'm still one of the top recruiters in my company after 19 years. Why? I don't need the new recruits for me. I need my team to see me continuing to recruit because our team is always going to follow their leader. They're, I'd rather watch a leader than to listen to one any day of the week. People are watching what you're doing, not listening to what you're saying. So let's keep moving. So we get back to the PowerPoint if we can, please. So I would encourage you guys, by the way, to... Get some accountability on a Facebook group and get that two a day going in your organization. Now, I want to address this thing about no meetings and about, hey, we can do our business all online. And by the way, if that's working for you, if you are doing everything online, everything on social media, and you say, ah, oh, we don't need meetings anymore, good for you. It does not work with me and my business. It just doesn't. Because I look at this over the long haul. Can you imagine if your church said, hey, we're shutting the church down. We're just going to do Facebook Lives on Sundays. That'd be kind of a little weird, right? It's like, you know, it's like the difference between Spotify and going to a concert. You know, there's, there's, Jim Rohn always said, never neglect the assembly. So I believe that online is great. You know, there's, there's, you got to marry high tech and high touch. I'm sorry, I keep going back. Marry high tech and high touch. When you see that coffee tomorrow, that's the power of coming to GoPro. Me coming two years ago and hearing Eric Worre talking about using that simple text of coffee tomorrow ex or question mark, that has no doubt in my mind that has made me another million dollars in the last two years. Just that one thing that I came away from GoPro, learning that one texting method, I went back to my team inside of my company and said, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're all going to go out and text like crazy, get all these appointments, get all these you know, coffee appointments, and we're going to exponentially grow our recruiting numbers. And that's what's happening, you guys. You got you to, but you got to marry high tech and high touch. It didn't say uh, Facebook Live tomorrow. It said coffee tomorrow. You bring the human element into this because that's the glue that holds everything together. So look, yes, of course, you're going to have weekly meetings. We've got Super Saturdays. At least we have, we have a weekly meeting. We have a, a monthly Super Saturday and we have a convention every single year. You know, I talk about PBRs, private business receptions in people's homes. People say, I don't want to go to people's homes anymore. That's okay if you don't want to do it. That is the, in my opinion, the number one best way to get in front of groups of people at a time instead of talking to people one at a time. So I absolutely believe in all of the physical elements of what we're talking about, but also online can be used for lead generation. It can be for communication with your team and supplemental presentations. It can be where a lot of your presentations are going, but all those online presentations need to funnel people into some times where people can get together because there's nothing that replaces your new recruits getting a chance to talk to somebody else that's in the business that they can relate to better than you could, they can relate to you. All right. Let me just wrap up with this very important piece, time management. We all have the same amount of time. What you do with your time, again, without the ability to actually dive deep into this, I've got a whole chapter in, in my book about it, but my, I, 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 I've got 25% of my time is spent prospecting new people myself. The second 25% of my time is following up on my existing prospects. So 
prospecting my new people and then following up on existing prospects. My third 25% of my time is talking to my team's prospects on three-way calls for them. You notice that 75% of my time is talking to prospects as income-producing activity. That's all we talk about in our organization. And then the final 25%, it should just say everything else. It's promoting events, promoting conference calls, promoting company incentives, you know, helping people learn what they need to do to rank advance, getting them registered for the convention, whatever the case is. That's the other 25%. So as my time is finishing up here, let me just wrap up with a simple phrase that I heard a mentor of mine years ago, Scotty Kufus, always said, design your days and use your time wisely. Design your days and use your time wisely. Always be productive because your team is watching everything that you're doing. And if you keep on leading by proper example, they will take you all the way to the top. Have a good day, you guys. Thank you. Everybody.